Hello everyone, we are Ellie and Senshi and we just finished the Camino del Norte. We are freshly done and we wanted to jump here and tell you guys about our honest opinion about everything, how much it cost, are we happy with the route we choose, about literally everything and most frequently asked questions on the Facebook groups, the comments we got, our YouTube comments, so we'll cover everything in today's video. So Ellie, why you should walk Camino de Santiago? That is a really good question. It is such a beautiful experience for so many reasons. And some of our favorites were the physical and mental challenge. So we walked away feeling really accomplished. So we did something big that was difficult. It took a lot of strength and we knocked it out of the park. So some of you might be looking for that. You also get a lot of clarity in your life. You have so much time and space to think about the past and process some deeper things and think about your future and what goals you have in life. Even if you're not spiritual, it is extremely beneficial for emotional and mental health. So you really walk away changed in some sort of way, physically, mentally, emotionally. If you're looking, if you're in a rut and you're looking for something new, that's when I would walk the Camino de Santiago. So you know you want to walk the Camino de Santiago, but why should you choose Del Norte? Why did we choose it? And are we happy with the decision? Okay, first of all, we didn't know nothing about Camino while choosing. <laughs> nothing. We only heard, okay, beaches, that's the one. Uh -huh. It is the <laughs> hardest one, the most challenging one. And at the moment, we didn't know nothing about Camino. I mean, literally nothing. It was his second hike Ever. So we were really novices with hiking and the Camino. On our first day leaving San Sebastian, we just figured out like, oh, there's arrows. <laughs> oh, you can follow the arrows. You can have a guidebook, but you can follow yeah. the arrows. The it's... arrows will show you the way. Literally like baseline knowledge at zero. And I must say, it literally took us a day or two to accustom to everything there is on mm -hmm. the Norte. And yeah. I must say... I am pretty, pretty, pretty happy with our decisions. We saw so many amazing beaches, views, forest, cliffs. It's just, I don't know, once in a lifetime thing mm -hmm. doing the Del Norte. And I wouldn't change a thing about it, to be honest. I'm so happy with our decision. Me too. And on that note, some people have asked, which is better, which is preferred, Camino del Norte or Camino Frances. Obviously, it's totally to each their own. It depends on what you're looking for, but to us, it's the Norte, hands down, every time. We haven't done the Frances, but we've heard so many things about how crowded it is in 2023. Maybe you get to meet more people along the way, if that's what you're looking for, to make a ton of friends. Uh, so that's maybe one reason to do the Frances. But for us, we still met a lot of people but we were able to still have that authentic, really reflective Camino experience because it was so much more peaceful. It was really quiet on the trail. Most days we saw a handful of people, most, like literally four pilgrims a day on average, five. Exactly. They were really small. Um, so we were still able to have that peace and quiet, like we said, time with our thoughts. And we didn't participate in any sort of like bed race or like stress about where we're gonna sleep at night. We only had a few issues where it was stressful to find accommodation, but we always managed to do so. Whereas we've heard some horror stories on the front face of people having nowhere to sleep and sleeping outside. So it depends on what you're looking for, but for us, it's the Norte. I think the true Camino spirit is still alive on the Camino del Norte. You're away from that hustle and bustle. You're able to have that authentic experience. I will also add because of who I am as a person, <laughs> always adding things. Of course. Um, on the Norte, you might need to know some more Spanish. A su vida esta y después reto. Ni izquierda ni derecha, reto. Just straight. Tigo y long. Sigue, okay. Okay. Va a la terraza. Va a la terraza. Okay. Y aronte arriba, Deo. The whole interaction is on Spanish. The guy keeps yelling, like we will understand better if he keeps yelling. This is what we said, the interactions with locals. It's not a necessity, you can get by without it, but again, th these towns aren't built just for pilgrims, they're built just for locals and living in Northern Spain. Whereas in the Frances, I don't think you need to know Spanish at all, really. There's always gonna be someone around that speaks English. But for us, we had a few times where Spanish was really essential, at least a few basic things. So keep that in mind too, when making your decision. 
I hope that answers everyone's question. Yeah. And now the big question everyone is wondering in 2023, how much does it cost to walk Camino del Norte? Lucky for you guys, we, and by we, I mean I, kept track of all of our expenses every single day in a thorough Google spreadsheet. So we have everything listed from food costs, accommodation costs, that's really most of the cost, obviously, because transportation is free, as we know. <laughs> and pharmacy, going to the pharmacy. Ah, yes. That's an uh, extra. True. For Ellie. Mm -hmm. A few miscellaneous costs, <clears throat> compied. So the total cost per person to walk the Camino del Norte came down to $1,131. Euros. And keep in mind, these are only walking days. We didn't account for rest days in this expense spreadsheet because that's really flexible. Depends on how much you want to rest or if you want to explore more towns and take it at a slower pace. So that's up to you. But we had 33 days of walking and it came down to 1,131 euros. So that's an average of 34 euros and 29 cents per day per person. And there's a few things in here to keep in mind when you're budgeting. So there's two of us. So we were able to stay in more private rooms that actually were cheaper because we were able to split the cost in half. And this is our room for tonight. In an albergue. And it wasn't extra cost or anything, 15 euros a person. And we have a private room, a private bathroom, and a freaking sea view. I mean, can you ask for any better? If you're an individual, you could stay in public albergues to keep the cost low. We didn't stay in many public albergues, um, just a matter of preference for us. So again, if you want to really budget, you can get this cost lower. We did a good job, however, of keeping a low budget for food. We mostly cooked or we packed our own lunches so you can save money that way. And when we did eat out, it was always a menu del dia. Uh, our favorite thing love, ever. Love the menu del dia, miss it so much. So much. Or a really cheap breakfast. Like I said, in Spain, they have a desayuno breakfast menu. It's like four euros for coffee, juice, sandwich, and a little cookie. So you can get some good value in Spain for your money when eating out, but we kept costs low overall for the food. So it is a little higher than we were expecting, but 100% it was still worth it in our minds, right? And you also have to take into consideration flights there if you're coming from US or Australia or some far places you have to consider flight tickets flying out of oh. Santiago or getting any kind of transportation so that will also add on to your expenses to be honest so you have to be looking at least 2000 euros to have in your bank account for this all in all we're happy with our decision yeah it was hard sometimes but most of the time was easy yeah if you would agree with that I would agree. And most people would say 34 euros on average per day is still low budget traveling. We're just used to very low budget traveling. Exactly. Yeah. And one last thing about money. Uh, it would be my advice to bring both a credit card and cash with you because a lot of these places are cash only. So I have a couple hundred euros on you, but not too much, of course, to the point where it's unsafe if something happens to it. So have a credit card with you as well. Take some money out at the ATM. They're all over the place around Spain. Okay, Ali, what would you do differently? That's a big one. That's a big one. Honestly, not a whole lot. I loved our experience and not to be dramatic, but it was my favorite thing I've ever done. So I, I wouldn't change much about it. However, there is always however. <laughs> there is always a however. If you watched our daily Camino videos where we recorded the entire experience stage by stage for you, check it out on our YouTube channel. You will know I suffered from blisters nearly the entire time, and that really lessened the experience for me. Obviously, I still had a wonderful time, but when each and every step is excruciatingly painful, it makes it a bit harder. So if I had to go back in time, I would invest in better footwear, better socks, and compete from the get-go. I was trying to do it on a budget. I was using shoes I already had, socks I already had, and just band-aids instead of compete. No, save yourself the physical and mental pain that is blisters and just invest the money up front. It's so worth it. I would also pack lighter and there's a few other things we would change too, but you can check out our full unpacking video. We have, we just posted it 
if you want some more advice on how to pack better and what we would do differently. I agree. I would also invest in Ellie's <laughs> equipment because when she's suffering, guess who else is suffering walking with her for 40 days every single day. So I, I would, <laughs> that's the thing I would change. I would invest in her equipment and more comfy. But... I don't know if that's the sweetest thing or if there is some sass to that, but I'll, I'll choose to believe the sweet side. It's the sweet, <laughs> of course. Senchi. Please. Obviously, you should, you know, walk what you're able to, embrace the entire Camino journey, all the ups and all the lows, all the beautiful views and all of the meh stages along the way. If you were on a time crunch, like we were, what stages would you skip, if any? Okay, unfortunately, we walked the whole thing. Mm -hmm. We were on a time crunch and we decided to walk the whole whole thing no matter what. But to be honest, there was some days we wish we could skip. Again, sometimes it was too late to do that, so we had to walk the whole thing. One example of that would be Bilbao to Portugalete. We had a really bad day because, I don't know, the route goes by the river, by some rundown buildings and Arriving to Portugalete was awful. We literally had no bed for the night. We had to ball out. We had to pay 90 euros for a hotel. I would skip that part and I would start walking from Portugalete. And the other example would be Santander to Santiago del Mar. Because most of the route goes by the road, by the highway. Mm -hmm. you, you are literally walking the full day through the city of Santander, then by the highway. There is no place to rest. There is literally nothing to see that. So if you're in a time crunch, you should just skip that, arriving to Santiana del Mar and leaving Santander. There is 30 kilometers mark. The first 20 kilometers goes through the highway and the other 10 kilometers follows the pipeline. Mm, that so pipeline. You're, you're literally walking 30 kilometers by the highway and following the pipeline. That was tough. That was really we tough. We did that in one day. That was... But that was like brutal. It's a stunning route, but there are a few days that are just not kind on the eyes. We were following yeah, an oil pipeline for literally eight kilometers or something. I would skip that part entirely and somehow try to arrive in Santiago del Mar earlier because uh, that is a really nice historic town. Mm -hmm. You can explore it for a full day, visit the museums, visit the museums, visit the church that's been dating back to 870 AD, something like that. There's so. a zoo. There's a lot to see. It's a really medieval town, really intact. So totally agree. We would, if I could go back, I would spend more time there. One last one. You want to skip Gijon to Aviles because that route, route goes by the highway and mm -hmm. through the factory yeah. zones. So, I don't know, do you want some smoke fumes from the big old factories? No, so just skip that part. There is buses in the morning leaving Gihon. We took that one. Mm -hmm. That was only bus we took, I think. Yeah. Literally only bus, and it was recommended by every single guidebook there is. So, skip the factories. Just continue walking from Aviles, you'll have much better time. If I could recap that, I would say there's a theme here. Skip the city places. Those were like all of the big industrial urban places that we walked through and those were the least beautiful along the entire route. So if you ever have an option to take an alternative route, take something more in the nature, I would always go for that even if it's a little bit longer, you'll have a much better experience. Okay, Sanchi, it was your second hike ever. Mm -hmm. First of all, Knucks. Nicely done. Svaka chas. Oh, <laughs> it is also known as the most challenging of all of the Camino routes. In your opinion, how challenging was it on a scale of one to 10? Well, literally none because I'm a beast. <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. To be honest, the first five days, it's been a struggle. It's been a bit, let's say, eight to nine on the difficulty scale. And just because we didn't do any training. None. There was no training involved. So first five days were getting used to the backpacks, 
to the weight and then to be honest for myself it started to be more like a three or four by the end it became like one or two on a difficulty scale i must say well one camino to you sanahi <laughs> how about you ellie i would agree for me the blisters probably brought it up to overall like a six it was physically demanding i will say it wasn't a walk in the park by any means every day we were sweating we were exhausted we were in pain like let's not underplay that it was hard it was the hardest thing i've ever done physically but we had no training of course we are young and thank god physically able and in decent shape but i think anyone can do it you maybe just need based on your own needs your own situation maybe you need extra preparation or something but i really think it's doable for everyone out there no matter what age or ability level you're at so it is challenging it is freaking hard but it's doable and that's the moral of the story is it's doable and it's totally worthwhile to do do you have to be religious to walk the camino de santiago i feel like we have a really good perspective to answer this question um since she was raised muslim i was raised catholic so combined we approach the camino with a really unique perspective and our answer would be no you don't have to be religious to walk the camino de santiago people walk it for all sorts of reasons for physical reasons for like i mentioned before to get out of some sort of rut to take a break from work just to take a break from you know technology your phone mm, to honor your beloved ones we heard a lot of stories of that yeah that was that's powerful to make friends like there's a million reasons to do it and of course yeah another reason to it is a religious one of course it is a catholic pilgrimage by origin but it there's so much more to it than just that it didn't feel pervasive like the whole thing was about being catholic no it's it will be a spiritual experience whether or not you go into it religious or looking for something spiritual and for us it wasn't necessarily a catholic spiritual experience but it will change you and it will impact you spiritually whether or not you're planning on it. So no, you don't have to be religious, but be ready. It will find its way into your little heart whether or not you're planning it. Exactly. And there is millions of people walking their own Camino for their own reasons. No one will judge you mm -hmm. for whatever reason you're walking it. You can talk openly about it. We had some talks with other people. No one will ever judge you for having your own Camino for your own reasons. Absolutely. People are really respectful. But thank you again for being here with us. We tried to answer all of the frequently asked questions and provide a ton of value for you guys in as short of amount of time as possible. But if we left anything on the table, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. We are freshly off the Camino still and we'll take any excuse to live that life again. So we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you again. Buen Camino. Buen Camino.